asymptotic notation. Before we get into the video, let me remind you to subscribe our channel if you have not done so that future videos will be intimated to you. If you like our video, please like it and you are free to pass comments too so that we can improve and share it along with your friends so that they will also learn. Now let us uh, start learning about this asymptotic notation. In algorithm, this asymptotic notation is a very important comparison and it is being done by three Greek friends. So here we have three different notations which are going to determine how good is our algorithm. Okay. So now we already have seen what is an algorithm. So it is a sequence of unambiguous uh, procedure for solving a problem that is for a desired output with the input which is being given we are going to uh, get the answer in a finite amount of time. So here we know after analyzing that input plays a very very important role the size of the input as well as the time taken for execution. So relating this input size and time we have these Greek friends helping us to determine what sort of a time duration is and does it take, how do we go about by computing or like how long does it take. So let me introduce to you these three notations, big O notation, this is big omega and theta notation. So you might be familiar with the terminology which is called as the best case, worst case and average case. So best case is going to be when you do your iteration, the very first iteration is if you get the answer, you call it as the best case. So the worst case is going to be you either don't have the output or you keep repeating till the end of all the, by using all the inputs so that you get the answer at the almost to the last uh, point. So then it becomes like the maximum duration you take for execution. So such case you call it as the worst case. So in between your first case and the last case that is the best and the worst you call it as the average case. So only that is being translated in terms of notation that is big O, big omega and theta. Let's get into it and let us focus on each and every notation in detail and I will tell you how to remember it so that it will be easier for you to fetch the answer. So now big O notation. So you have a T of N which is going to be the time taken for you for running the program and it is very much dependent on the size of input. So this X axis is with respect to your input size and this Y axis with respect to your time taken. So now let us get into this definition T of N okay the one which we are expecting belongs to the category which is called as the big O of G of N okay so that is going to be our estimation if T of N is bounded about okay if T of N is bounded about by some constant multiple of G of N. So we have a constant multiplication which is being done and you have it above this factor T of N and for all large N. This is not going to be for a smaller value of n. This is applicable for larger n. So here you have this n naught, which determines only after this point, this statement stays good. So below this, there might be some variation. Your uh, t of n might be here and um, c of g of n might be crossing over and everything. So this place still here n0, the factor of stability is not there. So there is a threshold point called n0. Beyond that you have this statement true. So once again let me tell if t of n that is the time taken for your formula 
is bounded above so by some constant multiple of g of n. Okay, so a constant is being multiplied for all large n. Yeah. Okay, so c, which is a multiplication constant, it's a positive constant. So n naught, as I told you, this n naught is going to be a non-negative integer. It is going to be a positive integer value. Above that, this is going to be true. Before that, it is it, it might be a failure condition. Okay, so when we just denote it, obviously our time taken n t of n is going to be lesser than it is below. So it is lesser than this constant multiple of g of n, and this is applicable for all n which are greater than n naught. Okay, when it is more than this n naught. This n stays good. Okay, so if your n is going to be here or here or here anywhere, it is true. So if it is going to be before this, it is a false condition. Okay, so this is the above bounded condition. So we can call it as the worst case condition. Okay. So the maximum number of time or the duration is being represented by big O notation. Next, let us focus on omega. So this omega, big omega, is going to be defined as um, t of n is said to be in big omega g of n if t of n, as I told you, t of n is the time taken, is bounded below it is bounded below by some constant multiple of g of n so c is going to be a positive constant and here also we have this n naught which is going to be a non-negative integer so everything is going to stay good for all the values above n naught to any n okay so this is bounded below. So our p of n value is greater than the constant multiplied by this g of n. So this is going to be the lower bound that is the best case. Okay, this is with respect to your minimum time taken for execution. When we get the answer in the very first instance or we get it at the very lower instance, we call it as by this terminology, big omega. And this is going to be the best case. Okay. So this will be the worst, the maximum time taken. And when we talk about this theta, theta notation is going to be defined as the P of n belongs to theta of g of n. If P of n is bound both above and below, okay, so we have both above and below by some constant multiples of g of n. So here we have c1 and c2 are two different constants, some positive constants, and as usual, n naught where above that is going to be good. So this uh, C2 is going to be the lower bound and this C1 is going to be the upper bound. So when we just saw this, this could be with respect to omega and this could be with respect to our big O. So whatever the value are, it is going to be in between. Okay, so our T of n lies between a constant C2 multiplied by G of n, which is going to be lesser than or equal to uh, T of n and the upper case is going to be C1 multiplied by G of n for all n greater than n naught. Okay, so this is nothing but our 
average kids. Okay, so these three notations, the asymptotic notations, determine the worst case, best case, and the average case, and we define it as whether it is being bound above or below, or it is a range between the below and above. So we have to keep it in mind for any instance our value will not exceed this boundary. So supposing we have a percentage like maximum mark we can obtain in an exam will be 100. So no one can get 101 or 110 or 500. All these values are ruled out. So this is going to be our maximum. Okay. So when we write our exam so what is the passing mark? 35. So if you get 35, you have passed the exam. If you get 34.5 or so, you have failed the exam. So if you get 0, of course, negative. That's also not possible. So anything above 35, you pass the exam. So what is the pass mark? You just define here. So it is between 35 and 100. So that is the average. So below this also doesn't stay good. Above this also we cannot take into consideration. So when we have an algorithm like these three terminology, we can use any of these depending on what sort of an application we have what sort of an estimation we have, whether we want to evaluate with the best case or it's going to be the worst case beyond which we cannot go about by determining the time taken or is it going to be the range which we are going to specify. So hope you have understood about this asymptotic notation, whether it is with respect to the worst case, then we use the big O notation if it is going to be with respect to the best case, the minimum time taken, then it will be with respect to big omega notation. And if it is going to be the average case, then it is going to be a range between the lower and the upper bound, that is the best and the worst case. So it's a, a relation between like what is the lower bound and the upper bound, which is being given by this theta notation okay that's the average case so hope you have understood this concept what is asymptotic notation and these three greek friends help us to understand how they have been evaluated how it has been rated in terms of this best worst average by using the time taken for execution and the amount of input what has been there for some large input for a problem. Okay, so hope you have learned what is asymptotic notation. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, if you like the video, like it, share it with your friends. And if you have any comments or any doubts, please mark them in the comment box. Thank you. Happy learning. Have a great day.